Welcome back to Slick Talk. This is your host, Joe. This is the May 25th, 2020 edition of the show. So if you've been following along, Blackstone has still been fully operational um, in in the months since COVID-19 became a reality, and that's still the case. Um, But with some quarantine restrictions easing up, that means that more people are out and about, and with that, you might hear a little bit more traffic coming through to the microphone and don't let that bother you we try to remove it in post-production um, along with like the noise of the cats in the background but sometimes some of it just sneaks through <laughs> to the final cut so if you do get a little bit of that realism uh you know it's just a reminder that we're we're coming at you from the real world just like you and we're dealing with the um the realities of shelter in place and uh with that being a thing for so many people, a uh, reality, uh, that often means the, the topic of inactivity has come up quite a bit, um, amongst other things. And that's whether it's someone's car, truck, airplane, boat, it's been sitting there maybe longer than you would like. And you just want to know what that might mean for the oil itself. But even before we get into used engine oil, I want to talk about unused oil because... People often have concerns about that even, and that's not unfounded. So when you buy a, you know, a quart of oil at the store, you can usually bank on it having a expiration date. And let's just say your driving habits or, or whatever have changed really drastically since uh, COVID-19. And all of a sudden you don't need to do an oil change for quite a while and you have this oil sitting on the shelf and you just can't trust it anymore because it's gone beyond the expiration date. Well, I have some really good news for you and that's that you really don't need to worry about that date. You don't need to worry about tossing the oil just because it's gone beyond a date. If it's been sealed up good and tight this whole time, then go ahead and Count on that oil still being serviceable, and here's why. The additive elements, none of that's going to go away. Uh, The oil's not going to just have lost its viscosity because it's been sitting on the shelf. And with that, though, we, we still understand why folks might want some peace of mind. And for that reason, you're absolutely welcome to send in a sample of the unused oil. And there are practical purposes for that, I will say, beyond just being concerned about a date or something like that. Some people want to see what the additives are, and for good reason. You know, you want to see if that oil starts off with, you know, sodium, for example, since that's a marker for coolant contamination, or you might want to see what the TBN is starting out, how much active additive is ready to go, and and what that starting value is, so you can track it in your in comparison to the used samples, all that good stuff. There is a lot to be gleaned from an unused sample, even just beyond us checking it for serviceability, so that's something worthwhile to do, and we do it all the time because people like to have a record. They like to see what the used product looks like uh, compared to the unused. But let's go beyond that. Let's talk about whether or not you say you have a car or truck and you've had that oil in there maybe upwards of six months or maybe you're coming up on a year. And if an oil change is hard to come by right now because of COVID or maybe you just haven't gone a certain amount of calendar time on the oil and and you will be now and you want to know what effect that might be. Well, we have some more good news and that's that calendar time alone is not going to cause oil to break down even once it's in the crankcase. Okay, so unless you have an engine that has an open breather, and an open breather is important because it would allow condensation to build up in the crankcase, and then you would have corrosion and rusting out, unless you have that open breather. And really, this is only common for engines. You know, you'd have to kind of go even as far back as the 70s. You might have had some in the 80s, but pretty much late 80s and onward, engines didn't have open breathers anymore, so they're really sealed up good and tight. 
And that's important because with that, you really don't have a concern. You're not going to have corrosion. You're not going to have, the engine's not going to have uh, wear metal accumulating just because the oil's sitting. It's not going to lose its viscosity in the crankcase. Oil only goes bad when it's doing its job. And that would be cleaning and lubricating the engine. So it's not just going to accumulate anything bad by sitting. You aren't going to have the oil break down. So really just keep the mileage on your radar. Think about how long it's been since your last oil change in terms of mileage. And go from there. But going beyond cars and trucks, you also have aircraft and you have boats. Well, flipping the script a little bit, time does matter quite a bit for aircraft and boats because corrosion does come into play there. With aircraft, you're going to want to fly at least five hours a month. That usually is enough time to keep rust and oxidation from forming. And if you are unable to do that, it's not always the end of the world. You know, if it's a flight schedule that hasn't been terribly active, you know, even then you're usually okay. Um, But when you do get into weeks that turn into months, then the situation can change substantially. So if you want to check in on the engine and see how it's been responding to the inactive period, We can absolutely tell you that in testing, uh, corrosion is going to register primarily as aluminum and iron. So we're going to look at those levels. If you've sampled with us before, we're going to see how those levels are trending. If you have not sampled with us before, we're going to start off and and compare them with our averages for the engine type and kind of go from there. But on the slip, we do ask about inactivity and our definition, again, is anything less than five hours a month or You can stretch it out 60 hours a year. Anything less than that, you can start to have corrosion come into the picture. And same idea for boats. Um, When they do a lot of sitting, you can also have corrosion come into play there as well. But here's the good thing, though. Even if you do have a scenario with corrosion causing some high levels, you can still expect things to improve with just flying more or or using the boat more because that's going to get rid of rust and oxidation and you'll see those levels improve gradually if the situation isn't too far gone. And really, I wouldn't assume a situation would be too far gone unless you let that inactivity stretch into years and years. And even then, we can see a narrative change. It's, It's not unheard of. So if you will be experiencing a little bit of downtime, understandably so, with your aircraft or your boat, then you can go ahead and just test it and see where things stand and we'll let you know if you have some room for improvement or if we see something that's going to call for a bit more maintenance, whatever the case may be. Uh, We can give you a status quo. Now, going into other areas like transmission oil, if you're looking at like a gear lube or an ATF, again, this is good news. You don't need to worry about how long it's been sitting there. You need to focus on the miles. And same idea with engine oil. Um, Transmission fluid is not going to just break down from sitting. You you will see a little bit of breakdown, you know, as the oil is used, but it's not just going to accumulate acidity. It's not going to accumulate, you know, there's not going to be a contamination that just forms, you know, out of thin air. And again, moisture, not really a concern um, for a transmission. So this is all good news in your maintenance, and it's really simplifying things. And that's kind of one of the few um, areas of good news right now with everything going on in the world is, is maintenance. Just stick with the miles and think about how many miles it's been since your last oil change and go from there. And of course, with this being May 25th, that means we're coming right up on the 31st. And if you haven't listened to the podcast previous to this one, then you might not know. On the 31st, we have an interview with Max of Max Revs. Coming up on the 31st, we're going to begin a live stream on his YouTube channel starting at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, that's a live stream, so you're encouraged to join us. I'm really excited to see um, the, the spread of questions. I think it's going to be really varied. I think we're going to have people from the Porsche community who 
are really looking for answers on hot button topics like IMS bearing problems in the M96 engine, or we'll probably get into bore scoring and how that shows up in testing. But I also hope we get a lot of just used oil analysis customers who, you know, are, are not necessarily of the Porsche community, but just looking for a little bit more insight on our business there, or even people who are totally new to this and just want to find out more information. I think it's going to be a really wide and varied audience, and I'm really excited to sit down and talk with Max. Uh, the conversations I've had with him so far have just been great. Um, he really cares about putting a professional product out there. He has a really good setup. You go on his YouTube channel right now, you can see what he's doing. He's bringing in a lot of people just from all over the world, and it's really providing a much needed sense of community right now, bringing people together, talking about things they love, cars, how they use them, their own cars, maintenance, everything under the sun. It's going to be a really exciting time to just sit down and talk shop with Max. So I really do hope you join us. We're looking forward to that. But before we let you go, we want to give a quick shout out and thank you to all of our listeners and subscribers for engaging with us, leaving us questions or comments on episodes. Um, we had a recent one from our friend Michael mentioning that he shared our show on Bob is the Oil Guy. And thank you for that shout out. You, you mentioned in, in your uh, comment that you're not sure if they allow that or not. I'm not sure if they do either, but we certainly appreciate it. Um, we have a lot of good dialogue with Bob is the Oil Guy forum users and we have a lot of samples come in from folks associated with that forum. So, you know, we're more than happy to engage. So whatever forum you might be a part of, automotive or otherwise, absolutely feel free to share the show. That's fine by us. We're always looking to reach out to, you know, prospective customers or people who are already customers, but they might not know about the show. So we always appreciate that. And going back to our second episode, uh, BMWs and bearings, we had a recent comment come up, um, this coming from subscriber BMW Outlet. Um, he mentions that he was under the impression that a lot of bearing wear that goes on in these engines is due to 10W60 oil that BMW recommends. And BMW Outlet, you are not alone in that assumption. Um, a lot of people write in, concern that 10W60 is bad oil or that's going to cause premature bearing wear. We haven't found that's the case. Um, and yes, it is true. Um, you, know, you can use other oils and get good results, just as you can with 10W60, um, but we haven't found that direct connection um, where 10W60 is clearly coinciding with bearings failing early. Um, people will tend to have poor bearing wear come up. You know, no matter how well they try and treat the car, some of these BMWs, especially M3s, you know, made from 2008, you know, to early 2011, um, it's just something that comes up very commonly um, where these bearings don't last as long as you would think they would. Some engines can avoid it, some can't, but but it's not because you're just using the wrong oil. Um, that's not to say, though, you know, he, uh, BMW Outlet mentions further along in his comment that 5W30 and 5W40 are the oils to use. And yeah, you do see a, a fairly wide range of oils being used these days and some with great results. But don't feel like if you're one of the people out there with a BMW and you're following the manual, you are not doing the wrong thing. You do want to monitor bearing wear closely though because those bearings can wear out prematurely and oil analysis can be really helpful in catching a failure before it suddenly, you know, gets to the point where you've thrown a rod and then the whole situation's going to a much, much darker and more expensive place. So feel free to follow the owner's manual. You're not doing the wrong thing. But closing out uh, this statement from BMW Outlet, uh, they also mention, regarding what you brought up with newer S65s with aluminum bearings, I had a buddy of mine who sent his oil in and they found no copper and it spun a bearing shortly after. So this is a situation I'd love to have the report in front of me. Um, I don't know if in this if in this situation we had found high aluminum but did not find the high copper and tin yet, or maybe all of these metals looked okay. I don't have all of that in front of me, but what I will say, because this applies to pretty much every situation, a metal is not going to show up all the time to indicate a problem because you can have situations where internal parts are worn to the point that they don't have any microscopic metal left to give. Or maybe this was a situation where we had a lot of excess wear, 
just not the high copper. In that case, maybe we had worn through the primary layer of the bearings, but hadn't gotten through to the secondary. There's a whole lot. So what I want to talk about here is just the fact that we take in context the entire report, and we also take in context whether it's a first sample from the vehicle or whether it's something where we have trends built it can be tough when you have a sample um, especially the first sample say it's one where we don't have the mileage on the oil maybe it was a very short oil run where metals didn't have any time to accumulate that's a situation where a car can still fail but the sample might look normal or maybe it's a situation where you know, you just hadn't gotten down to that secondary layer yet, a problem can go from bad to worse uh, rather suddenly. So if it's the first sample, take in mind all the variables like mileage on the oil, whether or not that sample has run long enough for us to get a good look. And also if the engine's running poorly, yet metals aren't necessarily high, well, that can be due to the fact the oil might not have been run long. There's just so much to take into account, um, which is why we're going to look at every metal in conjunction with the others, and we're also going to really like to have trends built so we can see how things are changing from one sample to the next. Just like humans, a car can have a bad day, but that does not mean that's going out the door. That does not mean that the car needs to go to the junkyard and, and be gone forever. We can tell you a whole lot more if we have a second third act um, to that engine's file. So thank you for sending in those questions, statements, what have you. We love having the interaction with all of you. So keep it up and stay safe. If it's the first sample, take in mind all the variable variables, variables. <laughs>